Everybody, I think something we can all agree on is that the 747 is one of the best aircraft ever made. And you know, one of the most significant things it did so well was being versatile. You know, everybody just Googling 747 modifications give you 53 million results. So many things were done to the special planes. You know, we've got the Sofia, for example, Air Force One, whatever. That is, it actually that way existed, didn't it? Great one. We've seen the Dreamlifter, even like the, the, the Virgin Orbit uh, launcher thing. Well, I even made a video about that, didn't I? But everybody has 747 modification that still sticks to me the most is, of course, the Shuttle's carrier thing. Yes. You know, I don't know how this actually worked or how this plane could still fly after, you know, a space shuttle was tucked onto it. I mean, literally, look at, look at this thing. And everybody, we now have it for the Microsoft. Off Flight Simulator 2020. Yes, you can now download the 747 SCA shuttle carrier aircraft here for free on the flightsim.to website. Now, is this plane super great? Not really. It's not that realistic. I mean, in real life, this plane was the 747-100. Right now, we are using the 747-8 model that's already included into the Microsoft Flight Simulator. I mean, look at this long upper deck or the very modern cockpit. It didn't really look like that in real life. But you know, I just appreciate the opportunity now to do some proper flight testing today. Let's do that. You know, really, this is not a very bad add-on. You can do this. is not This is not stupid. Especially the physics, of course, were changed now. Here we go. Definitely the Endeavour Space Shuttle Orbiter has been added to the main weight. 212,000 pounds. We can even remove it, right? Yeah, there we go. We can remove it. Things like that, always very realistic. Let's add it back into the plane. So, time now to fly the Smokum to Edwards Air Force Base in the desert of California land. This is the home of the shuttle carrier. Now, you know, let's just go. You know, the shuttle carrier, of course, was used to carry the shuttle around, you know, from places where it landed to the places where it took off again. For example, here, from Edwards Air Force Base to, um, um... Florida. And the question that we're going to now ask today is, well, what if the space shuttle has to do an emergency landing at a smaller airport and has to be taken off out of there? Welcome back to Air One. All right, now we've taken off at Edwards Air Force Base. The strong 747 has been able to take lift. And well, you know, this is something I find so impressive about the 747. I mean, you know, before this plane was a shuttle carrier, it was just, just a normal airliner for American Airlines. All they did was strip the cabin, strengthen the fuselage, and of course, add the mounting strength where that you know the space shuttle comes mounted onto and next to the vertical stabilizers they added which of course was added to the microsoft model as well and that's all there is to it for example the engines didn't have any upgrade at all which i think i mean this how does this fly so well i have no idea all right then let's maybe give this a bit of a runway test welcome to la mole airport you know what kind of impact does a space shuttle on top of your plane have on the performance let's maybe take off here you know this la mole airport has 1200 meters of runway which normally is enough to cope with a 747 most of the time sometimes let's give this a try now all right there we go any knots any knots uh it's not looking great it's not looking great at all jesus christ please don't die oh, jesus oh please take off you can do it you can do it you can't it can't do it i that has clearly not worked. Yeah, the runway performance was, of course, limited with the spatial on board. And of course, it was not only the runway performance, it was also the range reduced to 1,000 nautical miles. That's not too much for sure. You know, for example, the original 747 had 5,500. The shuttle carrier aircraft had an altitude ceiling of 15,000 feet, maximum cruise speed of Mach 0.6. Yeah, I mean, who would have thought that putting a space shuttle on your plane has a impact on performance. Anyway, this has been a bit of a failed takeoff attempt. Let's maybe try to do a failed landing attempt. You know what? I think landing shouldn't even be that much of an issue. You know what? I do notice that space shuttle on the back, man. All right, come on. Let's maybe try to do a landing. Ooh. It's not, it doesn't handle so well. The 747 normally flies beautifully. This really isn't as fun to fly, but there we go. Uh, we've landed. Barely. I mean, that was, <laughs> oops. Anyway, Stopping really does work quite well. You know, this increased weight doesn't do much, but geez. Let me say, uh, yeah, we, we, we need some maintenance on both the space shuttle and the 747. Yeah, good. Maybe time to step up this. Maybe go to the Alpine Mountains here, 6,000 feet of runway. You know, this is an important question. You know, what if the space shuttle wants to go skiing? Let's take off. Let me try to take off. I mean, 1,800 meters of runway. 
Come on. Uh, but it is barely gaining speed, I do have to say. All right, it's, uh... Oh, oh, end of runway. Once again, Jesus Christ. Wasn't that bad, the performance? Oh, my God. Like, we even have proper uh, headwind I added there for a bit of a cheat, but still, that hasn't worked at all. Okay, we, uh... No, that, no. What? All right. <clears throat> You know, we've got two options. Either the model of the 747 is just weird and totally underpowered here in the fight simulator or it was like that in real life. By the way, welcome to Skiatas Airport. We went there like a month ago in real life. So maybe try to take off here. Come on. This is not a proper commercial airport. I mean, gee, okay, you know, this is a big 747. I just realized this plane is huge. With this huge construction, probably one of the tallest flying planes ever made, honestly. I mean, look how tall this tail here of the space shuttle stands here. That's crazy. All right, come on now. We've got 120 knots. Um, 130. This might just work. I think we found a runway where the 747 space shuttle carrier can actually operate. <laughs> Barely! Very barely! Jesus Christ! That's been almost dying once again! There's people on the beach! Irresponsible. No, but seriously though, my goodness. Was the spatial carrier this underpowered, I'm asking myself? And here we have a takeoff test here. And, uh, doesn't look great at all. This, this plane does seem to use a lot of runway here. Look. That's a long runway. That's a long run, I do have to say. Well, buddy, I think we all have learned something new today. Whoa! The shortest runway the 747 shell carrier aircraft can operate on is the Skiatas Airport runway. It's 5,000 feet, 6,000 feet, something like that. It is not long for sure, but probably long enough. I mean, this plane doesn't even exist anymore anyway, so come on. Jesus Christ, how do I keep dying with this one? The performance really is bad. That's like the worst impact the shuttle really has had now. This plane handles horribly. Crashed into a mountain now, haven't I? I have. That's great to see, but everybody a great stop. And well, you know what? I do have to say, with the tilted landing gear that it has, this might just be a little bit of a butter machine, right? So that's kind of a good thing. I mean, even I remember making one in a Swiss Air One landing video. Look at that, everybody. 90 feet per minute. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Yes, beautiful, but as you can see, indeed, the 747-100 is a bit shorter. Look at this for a comparison. So everybody, yes, the 747, we all love it. And thank you so much for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night.